You're listening to a podcast from digitaloilandgas.com. This podcast is entitled The Gamification of Oil and Gas. I spent an hour on Zwift today and wondered if gamification could also work in oil and gas. Well, for sure, and here's how. First, what is Zwift? Well, Zwift is a massive online video game where the players are actually riding stationary bicycles against each other in races. It's used for training and having all kinds of uh, fun on, on a bicycle during winter months. But let's begin with what is gamification. Online games have been around for my entire business lifetime of 30 years. In fact, when I worked for a summer at McGill University in the 80s, we played an online game of sorts. The School of Computer Science handed out usage accounts and time credits to students to allow us to complete various assignments using the school's mainframe system. There was a bit of a black market for accounts whose students had completed the assignment without consuming all the compute cycles, and these turned into gaming accounts. Games were pretty rudimentary, usually some kind of shoot 'em genre, but using a dot matrix printer that printed off images of slowly moving target composed of asterisks, slashes, and dashes. It was all so high tech at the time. Looking back, mm, not so much. Today, entertainment games feature the usual elements that create addictive behavior. Point scoring, rewards, personalization, sensory immersion, competition with others individually or in teams, deep realism and various rules of play, and in several themes such as simulations, adventure, strategy, puzzles, action, combat, role-playing, and training. Gamification means bringing these ideas from the online game industry to other areas of commercial activity. The earliest examples included using games to encourage customers to engage with a product or a service. Retailers have been particularly aggressive in using games to encourage um, their customers into purchasing their products. A fine recent example is Norma Kamali's 3D movie and an online shopping experience where Kamali challenged customers to find specific objects in the movie. Bonobos gets mail shoppers to spot specific items from their clothing line hidden in their website in exchange for shopping credits. But can game thinking be brought to bear on the oil and gas industry? And if so, where? Well, I believe the foundational elements to bring widespread and more intense gamification to oil and gas are falling into place. First, the data representation of the real world is here. The use of engineering tools to design, build, main, and maintain oil and gas infrastructure has created the rich data environment to also create a purely online and immersive playground for games. Operational systems such as SCADA generate the kinds of real-time data to make environments even more real. We also have ample computer horsepower. The rise of cloud computing provides tons of nearly free compute time at low variable cost to house a game and play it across multiple companies, countries, and sites. Next, we have all the devices for engagement. The device world of smartphones and tablets and eventually hands-free devices like HoloLens has put a free game controller into everyone's hands. These devices can provide a rich gaming experience with sound, two-way communications, video, and haptic response. And last but not least, analytics. Rapid developments in artificial intelligence, neural computing, and big data enable games for complex business systems like oil and gas. Here's some very cool examples of games in the industry. First in capital project execution. Have you ever seen the project plan for a large oil and gas project? Building one is a collaborative effort involving a dozen key disciplines and oft times multiple firms, each of whom brings to bear their particular set of assumptions and orthodoxies about how the world works. After lots of meetings and workshops, engineers emerge with a complex Gantt chart incorporating thousands of lines written in engineering shorthand and programmed in the industry's planning tool of choice, Primavera P6. Suffice to say, these plans inevitably incorporate their share of bugs and mistakes that are in plain sight, but hidden from easy detection. Every engineer has their capital project story of how a crane arrives to carry out a lift, but the items to be lifted hadn't arrived, or the crane needs to navigate into an impossibly tight space to reach the lift site, or the beams to be lifted do not have their foundations in place. Well, what if the P6 plan could be programmed into a computer simulation game engine? Well, a company in Australia, Real Serious Games, or RSG, does exactly that. RSG's game engine translates the actions in a P6 plan into a kind of slow motion video that shows the interaction of equipment, like cranes, ships, and haulers, with materials like beams, scaffolds, and machinery, 
and infrastructure, like ports, roads, and warehouses, and finally, the actions of people. The game quickly reveals the inconsistencies hidden in the plan. Teams of engineers can play the capital game over and over, tweaking it to remove cost, speed up execution, and improve the throughput of machines and crews. Next game opportunity is Capital Project Forensics. Remember that scene from Top Gun where Maverick and Goose play a, replay a dogfight in the classroom? A second useful application of gamification in capital projects is in forensics. Often at the end of a large capital project, the engineering contractor presents the owner with the list of reimbursable overages that incurred during the project. Many are completely legitimate, but some should be turned back because the contractor did not begin the works with an efficient and effective plan. Imagine taking the P6 actuals and putting them into the same game engine. Much the same way that Maverick and Goose replayed their dogfight, the resulting video would show where the contractor's plan was inefficient and ineffective. Owners would be less willing to simply pay for contract overages, and Maverick contractors would learn to sharpen their plans. Another use case is in health and safety education. Employee health and safety training in oil and gas invariably includes basic awareness of the many kinds of hazards that exist on the job site. But translating the abstractness of PowerPoint into real understanding of the hazards and putting that training in tangible action on the job is still daunting. Incidents are still too high. Gamification offers a powerful new tool to help improve safety performance using augmented reality, drone photography of overhead scenes, and puzzles like Spot the Unsafe Condition, employees can up their game before stepping foot on site. These days, incident recording using smartphone apps and cameras creates a never-ending flow of game content for safety training. Industry participants do not need to compete on safety and should be willingly sharing this incident data to help the overall industry improve. And finally, how about commercial optimization? What if a game engine could be wrapped around the digital twin of an operating asset or business? Employees could then play with the assets in a virtual setting to learn the nuances of how the assets are likely to behave in real-world conditions. A fully functioning digital twin of an asset or a business includes many layers of data that need to work together to provide a rich, fully integrated and playable software version of the asset. First would include engineering content. This is the diagram, specifications, and configurations that describe the physical asset in digital terms for the engineering disciplines. Next would be the physical constraints of the various assets, their operating capacities, throughputs, and pressures that bound how the asset can physically behave. Third would be the operating parameters of the assets, their input energies, consumables, byproducts, and emissions, which also bound the asset's performance. Next would be the financial description of the assets, their fixed build cost, their operating cost per unit that yield the economics of the business. And finally, the game could include the uncertain elements of customer demand, weather events, and supply disruptions that are the real-world conditions with which the business must cope. The digital twin can have any number of these kinds of variables, whatever makes the most sense for the asset owner. For example, the digital twin of an oil refinery would want to include the crude slate with its variances of tan values, sulfur content and heavy metals, refinery complexity and logistics setting. A tank farm would want to include customer orders, supplier shipments and blending opportunities. A trading operation would include product demand, refining capacity, market pricing, margin, pipeline availabilities, crude choices and trading strategies. Using the digital twin of the business as the basis for a strategy game could help companies train up new managers, sharpen operating chops, set more meaningful performance targets, and identify opportunities to improve the business. If you want to read more about the digital twin, have a look at my article called, Have You Met My Twin? He's Digital. So in conclusion, game my day. The oil and gas industry is an industry rich in gamification potential. All the ingredients are in place to apply gamification to capital projects, health and safety, and commercial operations. You have been listening to a podcast from digitaloilgas.com. If you like what you've heard, please subscribe to future installments and visit us at digitaloilgas.com.